I've had a lot of people asking what I do in real life. So I thought the best thing would be to take you all with me. Today I'm visiting the South Ribble Museum and Exhibition Centre here in my hometown of Leyland. While the brick on the outside of the building is dated around 1680, the interior is of a much earlier timber frame structure constructed around 1585. This is the current out of date and tired looking display that is coming down to be replaced with a more modern looking streamlined and adjustable system. I need to design rails that will attach to the existing frame as I cannot drill into or do anything to disturb the original staff and dog timber frame wall. Also I can only build outwards no more than about 70 millimetres, otherwise I'm going to foul the swing of the door. Now the funding for this project is being met from visitor donations, which does mean there is no bottomless pit of money to buy an off the shelf system. So the design is going to take some thinking about. So after a bit of cogitating, I've come up with a minimalist idea that should fit the bill. I've made a quick test piece just to try out my idea first. And the only thing to attach to the existing frame will be three vertical aluminium bars. This is 22 millimeter aluminium, I think. So there'll be three of these set vertically on the existing frame and onto these horizontal rails will attach with this clamping method. So the front and the only part that will be visible is walnut MDF laminate and I've used this so that it will match the existing timber work in the room. Everything else will be cut from 18mm ply, the, the back rail and the components for the clamp. I'll have a, a piece of strip wood in the middle to form a H section to accommodate the display boards. But apart from the laminate and the strip wood, everything should come out of one sheet of 18mm hardwood plywood. This is the clamp and there'll be three to each rail. The passive side of the clamp is bigger and rigid and that's the part that fits up against the aluminium like that. This smaller active side of the clamp will use two bolts which will tighten up through embedded T-nuts and grip the aluminium. Now I've designed it so that when you tighten down this part of the plywood will actually flex backwards and what that will do is apply tension on the bolt so the bolt can't come loose through vibration over time. So Altogether I'll be making eight of these rails, but they could do with a set of three in four days time. So I better get started. A dry run with the blade down like this is a good idea. So you know the cut will go according to plan and you won't be faced with any unusual or unexpected snags in the middle of the cut.
When I'm ready, I raise the blade and start cutting. Using in-feed and out-feed tables, you can forget about the weight of the wood while you're making the cut. And it also avoids a dangerous balancing act. So all you have to worry about is feeding the material through the blade. I'm cutting the MDF laminate first. I picked this off cut up at the local builders merchants for a good price. It should be enough if I don't make any mistakes, otherwise I'll have to buy a full sheet and that would increase the cost of the job, so I'm taking my time with this. I had a few false starts with the plywood. Because I'm standing to the side so I can be nearer the table saw, I can't sight down the line of cut. But once I had the cut established, I was okay. This ply is made up from layers of hardwood, so I'm taking the cut slowly so I don't put too much strain on the mortar and I don't overheat the blade. If you watch carefully, at the end of this first cut, I'd skew the board on the outfeed table and pinch the blade. I'll watch for this from now on. As the board got smaller and lighter, I could do away with the in-feed table and sight straight down the line of cut. 40 minutes later, I had all the sheet materials cut to width. I did make a little bit of a mess. A good job the tidy police weren't watching, or so I thought. After detention and paying my penance for messing up the garden by having to wash up, I was eventually allowed out into the workshop. I wanted to cut all the components for the clamps to stay on schedule. There was a lot of pieces to cut before it got too late, so Stanley the Clamp gave me a hand. That's it, time for supper. It's 10 to 3 in the morning. I couldn't sleep. This job kept going round and round in my head, so I thought I'd come down to the workshop and get all the parts marked up ready to cut in the morning. I guess I'm kind of tired. I think I'll go home now. 
it's day two and I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed so I hit the ground running and get all the components for the clamps cut out. I'm on a roll. This four teeth per inch bandsaw blade is a bit rough but it is fast. Although a lot of these parts will be out of sight, I thought I would clean up all the edges on the sander. It would make them look nicer. I break all the edges and nip the corners by hand. These two pieces of 4x1 screwed together at 90 degrees makes a really versatile jig. The red clamps act as stops and using a scrap off cut as a spacer allows me to drill all three holes in one operation. They do say that if you want to find the easiest way to do a job, give it to a lazy man. This time, I changed the procedure and did away with the spacer block. I was getting a bit lightheaded, constantly blowing the wood chips out of the way, so I made another little modification. The last procedure was to drill at the recessed holes all the way through with this 8mm drill bit, ready to accept the T-nuts. This bolt makes the job of pressing home the T-nuts much easier as I can apply pressure using the vise and drive them fully home. The nuts are close to the edge but we'll be okay with that. Where did that bolt go? Another quick and dirty jig. Scraps hot glue together, align the parts and speeds up construction. I'm using thin screws to remove the need for drilling pilot holes. This joint will be in compression when it's finished and the glue will be doing all the work anyway. A 
quick modification to the jig and I'm ready to start assembling the active sides of the clamp. I was a little confused here as I was taking out the screws from the box some were the wrong way around. Only later did I realise they were for the holes on the other side of the clamp. I'm using Artists Acrylic to paint parts of the clamp I won't be able to get to later when it's assembled. Should any of the clamps be visible, then hopefully they will just blend into the background. Small pieces of anti-slip fabric glued to the passive side of the clamp should just help with the grip a little bit. Well, that's it for today. Time for bed and a fresh start in the morning. Day three and the sun is still shining. I can get outside and start assembling the rails. The bandsaw is way too heavy to lift out of the workshop. So I wheel it to the door and aim the fence for the back corner so I can cut the strip wood. Oh, just made it. I'm going to assemble everything on a piece of flat plywood so I don't accidentally create a curve in the rail when I nail on the strip wood. Not wanting any screws to be visible, the laminate will be fixed from the back so I mark out positions for holes using a set length of wood just as a rough guide and then I drill them. Now the laminate does need to line up with the back of the rail, otherwise it will cause problems later on. So I hot glue a quick jig together to help me. This double sided tape will hold the laminate firmly in place until everything is screwed together. A 
and I use the jig while I press the laminate home. Countersink in the holes just a little ensures the heads of the screws will be below the surface and out of the way and ensures they will reach long enough to bite into the back of the laminate. I drive these screws home by hand, feeling for any telltale bulges in the laminate which will warn me if I'm about to break through. If I detect a bulge, I can just back off the screw a little. All that remains is to cut the rails to length. I use a fine tooth tenon saw and once the cut is established I lean the saw back to follow my line. I then take the cut through the back edge of the laminate now so when I power through the rest of the cut I know I won't blow out the back edge. The remainder of the rails are painted with burnt umber artist's acrylic. It resists fading and should be readily available many years from now should they ever need touching up. It's the final day and the rails will be fitted this afternoon. I hold the rails together and mark the places where the clamps are going to go across all three rails. The passive side of the clamp is screwed right on the line and the speed square ensures I'm straight. The active side is fitted using a spacer. With the bolts in place, the construction is finished. Well, they've passed the quality control inspection by Lily, the neighbour's cat, so I can get them in the car, get some lunch and get them fitted this afternoon. I can finally take down the old display and I'm hoping I don't find anything unexpected underneath. Not now at this 11th hour. Everything is as anticipated so no surprises, fitting should be straightforward. I start by fitting the centre vertical bar first, ensuring it's plumb. Temporarily attaching one of the rails at the top will help me align the other two bars. I check for level, but 
in a building of this age, the timber frame has shifted and shrunk over the last 500 years, so nothing is straight. Even the floors slope. Which does come in handy because if you drop something, you always know where it's going to end up. Moving the rail to the bottom guarantees I've got the outside rails in perfect alignment so I can drive home the rest of the fixings. We are on the home run now and the rails are fitted into their final positions. Four days ago we were looking at a 30 year old tired display, past its best. But now we have a modern system, flexible and fully adjustable to meet the needs of the next 30 years. Unobtrusive rails do their job to perfection and discreetly blend into the background. And not only that, using the original ironmongery I had time to fabricate two frames to accommodate the displays in the corridor. Now everyone can read about Dr Kewarden and his contribution to the history of the town of Leyland. In a few weeks time the remaining rails will be fitted into these cabinets when this display gets its makeover. Thanks for watching and as always, jobs are good and